Hello everybody, I'm Night Cirque and welcome to episode 5 of our Minecraft 1.19 Survival Let's Play series. In our last episode, we got the subscriber temple done, where I will be writing names if I use one of your ideas in this Let's Play. We also got our very first farm done of the series. We did some more work up there with a pathway, and since that episode, I worked just a little bit off camera and I got a water elevator going. This water elevator is literally just going right to our base because that stairway pathway could take just a bit too long at times so we have a nice water elevator that leads us right here so in today's episode we are going to be working on making a little bit of a pathway around this area we are also going to be working on our skeleton xp farm hall just right here i also want to get our mine shaft actually done along with finding a village and hopefully bringing villagers back to make a villager trading hall we have a lot to do so let's get right into this the first First thing I want to do is go to the nether so we can get some bone blocks so we can work on our hall for our skeleton XP farm. And as you can see, we have a couple of these around our spawn in the nether. We have 49 bone blocks. I'm going to actually see if I can make some from bones. Don't know if these are a block that you can only find or if you actually can make it if you have bones. Yeah, I do not think you can make it. Ah, luckily for us, since we have that skeleton XP farm, we can make quite a lot. Since our stone chests were getting really filled, I decided to turn the chests just so we could double our storage space. What I want to do for this is actually very simple. I first want to open this hallway, and then I want to dig out these walls. And I think we actually could do something really cool with that. If we take ink sacks with some glass, we can make black dye. And then with this, we can make black stained glass. And I think if we place black stained glass, light actually does not go through. So I do not think we'll have to worry about losing efficiency for our farm. It does look like light is kind of getting through. I do not know if light actually does get through. And this is just hurting how efficient our farm can be. And now I want to go through and make this kind of like we're going through the inside of a skeleton. And I will be outlining all of this with cobblestone just because that is what a monster spawner is made out of and here is our skeleton xp farm hall here we go i got the bones kind of outlining the hallway as we go i got the bones facing two different directions for texture and i also added in some mossy cobblestone because that's how a dungeon usually is with normal cobblestone and some mossy cobblestone so that's what i did here i do like how this came out thank you for the idea and let's get on to our next project i now want to clear out a pretty big area for where our mineshaft hub will be so what i want to do is just just dig out all of this area around here and then create these little doorways for where we will be branch mining. Okie dokie, we are now done with digging out the initial room for our mineshaft. Now I just want to add a couple of chests in the corners and put up some logs along with some stone slabs. And that will be it for our mineshaft hub. Okay, this is what we got. Right now, I am debating on whether or not I want to do something with the floor. Couldn't break all of the floor just because some of it is bedrock. I hope you enjoy our little mineshaft hub. Let's get looking for a village. We are going to head off in this direction. And the reason for that is because we came from that direction. Over there is a lot of ocean. And down this direction, we still do not know what is down here. So I will be making a boat and we will go look for a village. While we go off for this village, I do want to say thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers. Our last episode, we just hit 1,000 and now we are at 2,000. Thank you all so, so very much. Hopefully we can find a village right at this water stream just so I can boat the villagers back here because that would just be perfect for us.
Oh, we have a village way down there. I turned my render distance up to 30 chunks just so hopefully while we're up there, we can see a village and we did. Now it is a little far. So transporting the villagers might be a bit of a pain, but we only do need to transport two villagers. We have made it to the village. I do plan on making a village at our base. I did find a brewing stand. So I think what we can do instead of transporting the villagers is cure some zombie villagers. Because I think that might be easier than getting a villager in a boat and somehow getting the villager through all of this and down to our base. And after we cure two zombie villagers, we will be able to start our own village breeder. And after that, we will be good to make our villager trading hall. I then stayed up all night fighting monsters, hoping to come across two zombie villagers that I can trap. And by the end of the night i did not end up finding any zombie villagers but only then is when i realized in order to make the potion of weakness that we need to cure the zombie villager i'd need blaze powder and since i do not have blaze powder i made the decision to transport the villagers the entire way through I have now transported both of the villagers back to our base and I have made a villager breeder. I was debating on showing the building process or not, but it's really just digging out a room and getting the two villagers in and that's pretty much it. So we got the villager breeder right here. I have two fence gates so they cannot exit. And here we go. We currently have three villagers. As you know, we transferred the two villagers. Basically, I just placed this composter. I got some carrots in here. I tossed them a bunch of carrots and now we have a baby. I'll just need to fill this entire room up with a bunch of beds and I did different color beds. It's not necessary but I do think it does make it look a lot better so I'll have to get a lot more beds in here. We will continue to get more and more villagers. I didn't have carrots until now but when I did find that village I was able to get four carrots and I planted them all around here and luckily since I have so much bones down here up there and in our XP farm we are very very good on getting our carrots we pretty much now have an infinite supply of carrots which is perfect because when we trade with villagers and we want to get more emeralds the villager up there does trade carrots and we could probably get a couple more villagers that would trade carrots so we are going to be able to get a lot of emeralds and make a lot of good trades now that we have all of these carrots i'm going to go get some emeralds Okay, 16 emeralds right there. And it's already working. We just got another kid. Wow. Okay. It's already working, which is great to see. While I was over there farming the carrots, they apparently uh, got, got making another kid. Yeah. So this is good. I will continue to fill this place with beds. And while they're breeding in the background, I actually will get started on making the little pathway right here and working on our villager trading hall. Let's get into this.
our villager trading hall is now complete. First off, I am going to keep the villager breeder going only because eventually I do want to make an underground village and I can use these villagers instead of using ones from the trading hall to do so. We got this nice pathway going all around. I did also start a melon farm. This is only a temporary melon farm. The villager that I trade carrots with also trades emeralds for melons. So I will be keeping this just for a little bit until I get to making an actual melon farm. And this is what we got for our trading hall. I connected it with some stilts, also connecting it to the roof and kind of going into the cave back in that direction. I have it completely filled with 20 villagers. I currently haven't given them any jobs. And that is because I want you to let me know what jobs and what trades I should be looking for. There are a couple I know I already want to get, like an efficiency villager or a mending villager. But this is my first time making an actual villager trading hall, and I pretty much have never done any actual trades with villagers like this. So please be sure to let me know what the best trades are and best jobs that I should be looking for in a villager. I will not be doing any trading with villagers in this episode, but at the beginning of next episode, I will go through your comments and I will try to get the best trades on the 20 villagers that we have here. Pretty soon we will fill this area in and our base is coming along very nice. Making our way to our skeleton XP farm, I actually went through and added soul sand and chains. I meant to do that the first time, but I kind of forgot. I really, really like what the soul sand adds to this build. That's all the soul sand I have now, but I will be collecting more and adding some more soul sand throughout this haul. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and leaving a like if you have not done so already. Please be sure to let me know what benches I should be placing down for the villagers and what trades I should be aiming for. Because with 20 villagers plus the carrot guy up there, we can get a lot of emeralds and make a lot of really cool trades. I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you all for 2,000 subscribers.